So you've clicked on the raising the floor video. This is a long, long video. This video has chapters. So if you go down to the description and you just want to skip around and see specific things, you can do that. But I challenge you to watch the entire thing because it's really cool. The process of lifting a building is not an easy process. So anyway, thank you for liking and watching and subscribing to this channel. And thank you so much for watching this video. Enjoy. So it's floor lifting day, building lifting day at the mill, and we've got a crew to pick up the floor. So we're going to get into it in a second, and I'll kind of narrate as you watch this unfold. Uh, this is the before picture, and we'll see how we look afterwards. Hopefully no one will be squished. We've got Ryan, Miso, Arnold, Arturo, Eric, myself, Jordan. John Drexler, he gets the full name. <laughs> and that's it, that's the crew. We're gonna start lifting this floor. Enjoy. The first step that we had to take after the planning was done, the first plan, the first action step to this whole thing was secure this beam that everything was sitting on. So down deep you have the stack stone footings and then you have more footings that went in later in life and then somehow, sometime in the world, this. I-beam got placed underneath the entire floor system. So we got GNS in here, welding the beams together. So when we start cutting them up into pieces, we wanted them to be as strong as possible. And a lot of these joints fell in areas, not this one in particular, but a lot of them fell in areas where we didn't want them twisting and, and messing up. Once that was done, um, we set the, lev the laser and we got things going to check everything so we put it on a wall that wasn't going to be moving and it was pretty dark down there so the laser showed up pretty well across that beam and what we were able to do here is we were able to measure from the, the bottom of the decking for the second floor down to that laser to get a benchmark of where it was before we lifted and you can see on the other side here's a close-up of the jack post <laughs> Um, this jack post held up in that case a 50 ton jack that jack could pick up twice the building that it, it, it did pick up the jack behind it's only a 20 ton uh, but you can see how these are all going across the building and we're getting all ready just having one man per jack everybody at this point is manning their stations and getting ready to lift so the first step would be to get up there get familiar with their footing and where what's around them so they're safe and then kind of put pressure on the jack you could feel the jack and the tension that it was under so that was really cool that we had that you know kind of we could get that read off of the jack i really enjoyed i didn't know i thought those jacks would just move but yeah so you could see here there's absolutely no resistance on that 50 ton. So that was the hardest one to read, actually. Uh, I didn't realize going into this that you can have jacks that are too big because uh, you can't feel the building moving. The jack is just so strong. It does it so effortlessly. Um, something cool to point out there above Jordan's head, we, we kind of sistered 2x12s on the side of that beam where there's a really cool joint. Um, uh, joint I'd never seen before. It was like some weird zigzag thing with a peg in the middle. So we did that and that was just a safety precaution. Uh, yeah, Arturo's measuring to the laser there. You see the laser and I've got my tape set up on it. And then I think we're you know about to just start getting into it. You know, Arnold there doing his thing. Uh, he's lifting with a piece of rebar because we lost the jack handle for that one. Um, but uh, yeah, you see these angle braces coming down. They seem counterintuitive. They seem like they're upside down because as you lift them, you change the angle of those, those braces. For a short amount of distance, it's not a big deal. Nothing really is affected by that. But if you were to go more than say 
two inches, which in our case we did three, a lot of those had to be reset. The angle changed enough and it, it was fighting. The braces were fighting lifting the floor. They were holding it back. So we actually lifted this floor in two sections, two different days. This day was lifting, I don't know, maybe two, two and a half inches here. And uh, actually some of it we lifted and then put back down. But um, yeah, we lifted in two stages just to kind of see how things settled out and to see, you know, the long term effects of moving this the second floor. Because, you know, when you build a floor, multiple decks, like the structural level and then the 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 one one by that kind of laps it and holds that together. And then on top of that, the flooring that doesn't want to bend. That's forming a, a flat surface. And after 140 something years of it being in that position, when we started, you know, torquing on it, it really, really made a lot of noise. So, I don't know, there's just a lot of time spent checking all of these and moving them. Before we did the second set of lifts, you can see we're already adjusting a post there. Before we did the second set of lifts, we actually numbered these beams. So you can be like, okay, this is post number what? Number one through through six. This seems like it was kind of a slow day. There were slow moments and there were crazy moments here. I'm breaking that thing loose. And then we went back and tightened it down. We realized about halfway through raising this floor. I say we, the engineer came in. He was like, hey, you guys know you're lifting this entire floor, but this beam can't lift. It's bolted all the way through to the first floor and stuck into an existing footing. So. We're just twisting the end, or, or you know, bending the end of this beam. So uh, Ryan came up here, and he had to. Uh, Ryan had to um, uh, take these giant lag screws out, and and uh, yeah, that made a huge difference. <laughs> I mean, lifting that section of the floor much easier. So yeah, that was kind of a process taking those things out. We'd do it with a pipe wrench because we didn't have an inch and a half socket. You would you would be able to take that out with a socket. You'd need an inch and a half, 12 point socket to take out those square hood bolts. Uh, did not have that, so. I think he did one. You'll probably see me step in here and do another one and then realize that it's annoying. So I, Arnold did the last one. <laughs> That's a cool view where, you know, you could see that oh, there's Arnold doing the next one. You could see the post translating from the first floor to the second and then up onto the, well, actually it didn't go to the third floor. The steel post stopped at the second floor. 
ceiling. So he's getting that last lag screw out and then we're gonna like hastily kind of put a jack post there and pick that up from upstairs. And then we're doing that so it catches up with the rest of the floor. The beam behind Eric right there is uh, shimmed up and later we actually come back and remove all those shims. Who knows when those shims were put there, but it was they were done to try to compensate for the fact that the floor or the, the roof was bowing down in the center from the, the thing settling. So yeah, we built a jack real quick. We put a bunch of two by tens underneath it to span, put all that weight that we're lifting with, spreading it out. So uh, it's amazing how quick that went when you had a pile of people there all working together to get it done. Um, yeah, there's kind of a lot of stuff. Oh, and Jordan, yeah, he had to run to Lowe's to get jack number, what was that, jack number eight. And then we end up having to get two more jacks after that to lift the um, the last footing that we couldn't do in this phase. That was like phase three or four of lifting. So glad the lifting is behind us now. So the jack has been, jack post is in place. So Arturo is taking a 20 ton jack and he is putting it up on top of the jack post and then putting tension on the whole whole rig. And he's pumping it up right there. He's then realizing that you gotta lower it down, which he'll do, and then screw, screw the um, leveling post. So you, you try to get as high as you can by screwing the, the jack like inside screw up first because right there that jack is about fully extended meaning there's you can't really lift that floor any more than than it is so we'll take it back well we did that like a lot <laughs> we've got to put a level on it there you go. There it is readjusted. So lowered down and then and then screwed up so you had some freedom there. And that's just cool to see, you know, how much it's been lifted. Also cool to see back in that other view how like the original paint could only it looks like it's only been painted one time since the building was built. Which is good. Good for me because we didn't have to scrape and mess with a lot of paint. If you look closely where Arturo's working and the guys, those original jacks are now off the ground. So as we lifted them, we put shims underneath them for a while. So if we did drop something, cause this was pretty intense. If we drop something, the building wouldn't fall the full distance it had been raised. It would only fall a quarter inch max. So uh, here Arturo and ain't, or no Misa, that's Misa right there. Our, readjusting the jacks so putting boards underneath them you had to be careful if you put like a modern two by six underneath the jack the wood is so terrible now that it would just crush the wood the framing conventional framing lumber now is like spongy compared to the lumber that we're used to dealing with in this mill it's so dense and so old uh, which is really cool but we, we had to be cognizant of that. I, I made that mistake putting an, a new piece of wood under there and it did not do so well.
So we just saw a little boost, a little, little motion, where if you look at the laser across the beam, you could see a minute ago that like it kind of jumped up and then we had to set reset a lot of our jacks. We had to do this one at a time because if you dropped two jacks at once, you would put insane pressure on a third jack. So it was really cool to say like, okay, you know, the timing meant a lot when lifting the floor. Everything had to kind of be done together. just evaluating it and saying you know it looks pretty good you can see down low like look at the distance we covered okay so right here we're putting in the more the the temporary bracing so you have a jack post and a jack and then once we we're happy we cut these posts to fit snugly so we could take the pressure off the jacks so we could go home um, so you know it's just kind of like a backup to the floor um, and these would stay here for weeks, whereas the, the original posts could now come out once these, these uh, braces were in. We put 2x6s on the outer edges of these 3-ply 2x12s, and the reason we did that is because uh, we call it a strong back, where you have a piece of wood, it's, it's strong and rigid in its you know, vertical position, but when placed horizontally, it's springy, and so creating a T allows you to be strong in both directions uh, more rigid as a post so yeah we're back to some more lifting um, but this is just a really cool shot because you can see closer like compared to that Gatorade bottle that that floor is, is up those posts are dingle dangling off the ground and uh, the engineer is just gonna give it a couple more looksies before we call it a day
putting up the last of the bracing and these things were heavy so when we're lifting these things up each one weighs I don't know 200 pounds something like that it's just everything is so heavy now 2 by 12 doesn't weigh that much when you buy it from Lowe's but 2 by 12 that's actually 2 inches by 12 inches in the mill is it's intense so we, we got those in place Nine's coming down. Looks like someone's on the Mini X here. And we're knocking that post out. The reason for using the Mini X is just so we could do it from a safe distance. Those posts have been holding the building up since a long time. <laughs> and uh, and we, we've done a lot of preparations to get to the point where we can uh, drop that thing. So that is super cool yay first post is down and then we gotta snatch that capital out oh yeah that's me driving i think capitals were spiked up to the beam you know I'm guessing when they put them in similar to the way we did it they uh, secured the capital and then came up underneath it with a post and I don't know if they're original or when they went in because these capitals had hatchet marks and had sprinklers run into them so I don't I think this was done these posts were done in 1916 I don't know if I mentioned earlier but the reason part of the reason we we demoed all of this was because well a we had to get to the footings because they had settled making the whole building settle three inches and we had to these these things were undersized you're you got a 10 inch beam in the capital is 10 inches but then the post that was holding it up was only nine inches which is probably adequate, I don't really know, but like they, the col the post, hey, there it goes. Um, that thing, they were frowning, we called it, so they were actually sagging, I guess. They wore out, but the posts on the first floor were actually smaller than the posts on the second floor. It doesn't make any sense, and I think it's because they were 1916 posts where the, um, the posts on the first floor were 1875 posts. And then, I don't know if you can really tell, but it was all shaved away because in the 50s, American Neiford came in and built all these walls in this space. And when they built them, they sprinkled them. So they put sprinklers in and they were they were going up through the floor into the wall and they just chopped up everything in their way. So here I am again, taking another post out. Oh, I came out in one shot. That's cool. That was kind of exciting, doing that. So here's doing all that from a different angle, just that time-lapse camera. Um, I had it just up in the air. And I took that down and I came back into the other one and knocked them all out. Oh, and we'd already gone in and cut that one piece of I-beam. That's exciting. It's exciting when you spend months crawling underneath that I-beam or walking over it, and then you cut it, and then all of a sudden it's a straight shot walk. You could see the ratchet strap from a really old video where we ratchet strapped that footing together. Oh yeah, at one point I stuck this camera over here. This was this is the emergency exit door on the second floor, so you could actually see. I mean, it's it's not that exciting, but you can actually see the floor lifting here, and that's you know us underneath it. Now the downside here is we got to a certain point here, and we start putting a, a lot of pressure on the end of the beam because I didn't realize that this beam was pocketed into this wall and had run out of space to go up. 
So here I am really pushing on it. And then you can see where the beam goes into the, the exterior wall. That that needed to be cleared out more. And until that happened, you're just you're just asking for trouble. Here's a good view from inside that, above the lintel there, we put two bricks and some steel there to support that beam. That steel lintel is intense. It's two I-beams with steel plate welded to them. Oh, that's nice. Put a flashlight on it so you could actually see. Um, and we've got that sandwiched in there now with bricks, so there's no moving it. It is where it's going to be for the rest of my life at least. And then we infilled all that, and now it's good. Oh, here, this is cool. If this doesn't make any sense to you, it's I put a string, I put bricks on the end of the string on both sides of the building, and then I set some bottles here and set a time lapse. So you can see as we lift the building, the bottles go up and get closer to the string. Uh, the, the roof gets closer to the string in the middle. So you can see the lifting progress. This is only recorded for the first lift. So we went back down at one point, we had to readjust, and then there should be just the last lift, which is the big one. Zip, and there she goes. And uh, now you, you see with that, the string was still two and a half inches below being level. So there's still a need for a, a roof drain because uh, the water doesn't drain to the outside. There's no pitch, to, there's an inverted pitch we could say. Once we had everything secure and the floor was done being lifted, it was beam cutting time. So, you know, just behind my feet, there's um, the stack stone. Well, actually, yeah, it's stack stone with the uh, bricks on top. And um, there's actually a brick footing where the jacks are. That's a newer footing. I don't know when it was put in. Um, so we had to get to the footing behind us, uh, behind my back here, to set a new footing that's designed properly and then set post on that. If that makes <laughs> if that makes sense. We're cutting the I-beam out of the way. That's what we're doing. So we get to cut the I-beams. I actually bought a plasma cutter for this because I've always wanted a plasma cutter and it was super cool and worth it. But uh, Arturo said he could do it faster with the quickie saw. And I mean, he was a little faster because I'd never used a plasma cutter before. But I don't know. I was a lot quieter, I'll say that. Once we had these guys cut out, we were able to go in and uh, dig them out. <laughs> That's just a picture that we took where uh, one of the stones, uh, you know, just holding on to one of the stones from the footing. I think I dug the last one out. Trinity did this one. Um, so he sets the thing out of the way, he starts digging it up, and I think he actually used the I-beam to rake, which was really cool. I, there's some big stones come out of those footings. Um, it's funny, I, you know, I got, I got a, I was like, hey, will you guys uh, tore up my strap? And they're like, yeah, it was buried in eight feet of stone, and we dug it with a mini axe. What did you expect to happen? Yeah, there's some big rocks. Sometimes the Mini X had struggled. I mean, that's not the biggest machine, but it's not the smallest either. It, it had a hard time pulling some of those up. Those stacked stone footings are definitely original to the building. 1875. We're going to do, we might do our sign with those. Um, or some of them, you know. We're going to restack them outside and maybe put the logo on them. 
So yeah, he's just digging away here, getting that out of our way, and then prepping for us to put the new footings in here. Here we're at column number six. So there was a column and a post here. And then you see we cut the I-beam out. And oh yeah, we did get it. He's raking, raking away. I think Bree took this off the security camera. That's, that's how she was able to get this footage. Set those jacks there. See more jacks. See the jacks on the end holding the T up? They're labeled here. So we're at six, seven, jack eight, and jack nine holding that T up. There's no weight on these end footing here. Footings here. We actually sent two more posts further down. The whole th there was a process. Oh yeah, he made a real nice clean work area for the guys. To Arturo came back in and and formed a footing up. Yeah. Not often you see a, a mini X operator get out and hold a shovel. I think that's kind of cool. This was a fun one. Arturo and I had to uh, carve the capitals. So we had to take this new kiln dried Douglas fir, very expensive wood, uh, that replaced the old, this, this is replacing the old. So this is the new going in. And uh, we have the luxury of modern day chainsaws to make, I don't know how they did them back in the day. Also don't know why I'm cutting so crooked. Arturo's freaking out, but um, and we got the hang of this pretty quick. I did one, I did maybe two or three of them actually. I helped him and he did the other three on his own. They came out great. We're just hacking away at it um, and just forming it into a, you know, a, a curve. Uh, what do you call it, quarter round? Just, tr just trying different ways to do it. We got better as we went, but like, they, they really look good. I mean, they don't look good here, but they look good when they're done. Come out to the mill and see them installed. That's the farm boss chainsaw. We do a lot of chainsawing here. And then Arturo's going back with that sander and just finishing it off. That that really, you know, cleaned it up. These things are pretty heavy. And we set them in place and we'll go put them up. I don't think there's any footage of us putting them up. Because uh, that, was, that was a rough job. You know, it's tough to pick something up 11 and a half feet, or in this case, 14 feet above your head, and and secure it. And <laughs> we secured it with like 15 inch lag screws. Uh, after we were done carving the capitals, we had GNS fabricated these brackets for us. They look really nice. Um, they came primed and then we painted them black. Got the new capital, the new column, the new post, the footing. Uh, that has been engineered and everything is all set. We're sitting on this uh, lintel over here. We got that shim just right. Everything looks pretty. Everybody's happy? You guys happy? Sure. All right. Take that jack post down. That's first the first jack post officially being removed. Yay! Thanks guys. Yes, Look at that old footing. And this was intense. This last corner here, this is where 1875 meets 1916. And to support this, you couldn't do it by going further down the line. You had to straddle the old footing. That way you could remove the old footing and dig out underneath it. So we used two 22 foot long I-beams that we salvaged from demoing the floor. And that was jack number 10 going up right there. 
So we finally got Jacks under post number eight this morning. Give that thing a little wiggle real quick, Arturo. That's it, the ceremonial removal of the, the last stack stone. So we're gonna dig this footing out, pour one big old footing, call it a day. Uh, you can't tell here, but this is cut on the right side. And then on the left side, these two I-beam posts are just kind of floating. Arturo just pulled the granite out and he had done all this work to like hold it. I can't remember which weekly update it was, but we found underwear in that footing. It was the weirdest thing. Like a lot of women's underwear was in that footing. And uh, no, we didn't save it. It's gone now. Also like an animal skull, which is also gone. But I think you can see some like nightgown on the ground right now or a bra or something from 1916. But yeah, we're very carefully working around all of our temporary support and trying to get this thing out because it's cut all, I cut it with the plasma cutter and I just cut it all crooked. Yep, kicked it out right there. And then just kind of pushed that stuff out of our way and cleaned it up. This was kind of tough at one point, you know, there was only so much room to work with. So if you get too close to your temporary supports, you compromise the, the ground that they're on. You know, so you start undermining them, the gravel falls down into the hole you're digging, and then the, the whole thing is just collapses. And this was holding up a significant amount of the building because you're in the heavy timber section. You know, one piece comes down, you lose a lot of stuff. So here you got um, Trinity's pulling all that stuff out very carefully, and we're kind of like spotting him, you know, watching and, and just hollering if he gets too close to something it's hard to just see everything at once um but yeah and then he's digging out that was a piece of plywood that got buried in the whole process but at this point we have the six post back in so we're just now building a new footing for what is the two remaining posts post number seven and eight which are both made out of steel i-beams and we're getting a footing ready for post number nine which, uh, yeah, like, uh, just stop and just look at the fact that that's all dingle dangling with a giant hole underneath it. Like it, that, I did not like doing that part. That was very scary to me, but we did it and it's done. And then, uh, just like all the other ones, Arturo built the footing. This is a giant footing that we had to put here cause it's holding three posts, a bunch of rebar in it. That thing's not going anywhere. And it's sitting on good 57 stone wash stone. Uh, once he had that dug up, a concrete cut truck comes in. This concrete was a little wet as he was getting used to it, but um, or just getting his mix right. These concrete trucks now, they didn't have this, I don't think, when I was doing construction, but they, they mix right there on site, um, which I thought was really cool. So the soupy stuff fell right through, and then after that, we got to some good concrete to put this footing in. Um, but yeah, that was, that was it. I mean pour that footing and then once you pour the footing you gotta wait a week I can't believe you actually made it this far into this video thank you so much if you watch this entire thing I think you might love this project as much as I do it's really cool lifting this building was scary it was intense we did some stuff that maybe wasn't right but at the end of the day we got it all done uh, since the end of that footage that you saw just now we've been able to go back and do some other structural repairs, including getting this post in. So now we have all three posts in, this big giant footing right here, holding those three posts in. And we're like, it won't be long, four plumbers are coming in here. So that's really cool. Uh, looking down and seeing the new timbers, those brackets that the engineer fabbed up, or drew up, that, like seeing them in reality, it just all looks beefy and it's just sexy. It's really good, so real stoked about that. Really glad that's behind us. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a like. Write in the description below uh, if you wanna see anything else out here. And uh, subscribe, if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe to our channel. Of course, if you made it this far, you've gotta be a subscriber by now. Thank you so much. Don't be dumb, drink Carolina rum, cheers.